everyone, my name is Alex Vanover and I'm with Divine Design Crafts and I'm here today to show you an overview of the Cricut software that you're seeing right now called Design Space. So if you're new to the Cricut, this is the perfect way to get acquainted with the software. It can be a little bit intimidating at first, but it's really easy to use once you understand it. So I'm going to show you some of the basic principles to get you started so that you can make some of your first projects. So in order to get to this screen, this is a canvas in Design Space, you'll want to make an account on Cricut.com. So the way that we're going to do this today is I'm going to start here at this drop down menu and I'm going to show you all the way around the screen. We're going to do a couple of samples so I can show you some of the basics. I'll also show you a basic beginning to a project as if I was going to cut a material, but I'm not actually going to cut anything today. So we'll start in this upper left hand corner. These three lines are a drop down menu and this is going to show you some information for your Cricut account. So you won't use this a ton, but there are a couple important things in here. If you were to do a, a print and cut project, you need to calibrate your machine. So you can calibrate it using this function right here. If you don't know what a print then cut is, don't worry about it. That's a little bit more of an advanced project, but that is there in case you need it. And in case you haven't set up your machine or in case you get a new one, this is the area where you would set up your machine and link it to your Design Space account. So this left hand toolbar is going to give you some different options for adding things into your Design Space project. This top new button is what you're going to click if you want to start a new blank canvas that looks just like this. So if you were in one project, you were finished with it and you wanted to start new, you would click this button. The next button down is the templates button. This has tons of templates for different kinds of projects that Cricut suggests that you can do. It can give you some really great inspiration if you want to do a project but you don't know what you want to do. You can scroll through here and get some ideas. Anything from canisters that go on your kitchen counter all the way to camping chairs to clipboards. Um, it gives you tons of guidelines for different things that you can customize, even your Cricut machine. Now, um, keep in mind that you still want to measure your actual projects before you cut them. So don't trust the template and make the project without double checking your measurements first. But this is a great start for getting some ideas for projects or for laying a project out if you don't have the physical item in front of you. If you click on the projects button, this is going to show you projects both that Cricut provides and you can also filter this area and go to your projects as well. Um, you can go to different categories through Cricut. They have some paid projects that you can do as well as some free ones. So you can filter it down to let's say free for the Cricut Explorer Air. And there are tons of free projects for you to try. So this is a fun one. I've made this card for my mom for Mother's Day. So there's lots of great things in this category that you can check out, especially when you're new and just trying to play around and get used to your Cricut. The, the projects tab is great, but again, you can also filter your projects that you've done in the past. So that's an easy way to get to them. The images tab has images that you've uploaded as well as images that you've been provided by Cricut. So some of them are paid. You'll see if they have a dollar amount down here, they're images that you do have to buy. But again, you can use this filter and you can also sort it by your own images. So these images, like my images, could be things that I've purchased in some cartridges because I do have a couple of Cricut cartridges or just images that you've purchased through other projects. You can even filter this so that it's just images that you've uploaded. And that way you're not looking for anything that's paid. This is all stuff that you've put on your Cricut account yourself. So that has lots of options for you. If you do have any cartridges, you can also access those here since they're digital now. You can also purchase them through this tab as well. So going back to the canvas, this is another action that you can add to your canvas, which is adding text. So I'm going to add some text here and we will go back to this in a few moments but I wanted to show you that. Um, and I'll also go back to this toolbar up here. This is where you can adjust and edit a lot of your text as well. We'll change this to a different font. And we'll go back to that. 
So another thing you can add to your canvas from this left hand toolbar are basic shapes. So it stores a lot of these for you and a unique one here is the score line. So the score line is like the line in a card that folds it in half. You can add those into your Cricut projects as well. You do have to use the scoring tool for that, but I believe all of the Cricut Airs come with a scoring tool so that's easy to do. Especially if you're into paper crafts or card making, the scoring line is really, really useful. And lastly, on this toolbar, you can also upload your own images. Um, this would be images that you're bringing in from outside Design Space. So, if you, for example, if you purchase an SVG file from Etsy or from somewhere else, or if you just grab an image off the internet, you can upload it by going here. So I have an, a sample image that I'm going to show you guys how to upload. I'm actually going to use my Divine Design logo. This is a JPEG um, image that I pulled off my own website. So this image does have a couple of different colors in it and um, different pieces. So we're going to select complex just to make sure that Design Space picks up on all of the different pieces of this design. So then I'm going to use the select and erase tool and I'm going to erase the background from this image so that way all of the things that Design Space is going to see is this outer loop and the two inside D's. That way it doesn't pick up this background. And then we will continue. So this is the image on the left is for a print then cut image. For most projects, you're not going to want to use this one. Um, that's a little more of an advanced project that I referenced earlier. It's just actually going to look this like this image on the right. This is the save as a cut image. That's what you're going to do most of your projects on. And I'm going to name my logo Divine Design Logo. I also like to use tags because it helps me find images later. So I can go into my images button and I can search for different tags that are similar and I will be able to find them without searching through everything that I've uploaded. So once I've selected a cut image, named it and given it tags, I'm going to go to save. And then once you get there, you can click it and you can insert your image into Design Space. We're not going to use this, so I'm going to get rid of that, but I am going to put a sample image on here that we are going to use in a few minutes. So next on the screen, um, it's a little bit hard to see, but this is the zoom button. So you can make your canvas larger and smaller using the zoom here. I usually leave it at about 100%. So on this right hand panel, this is going to be your layers panel. See, it has all of the images that you've put in your design space. It's going to call them layers. So this is where you're going to be able to work on some of those layers all at once. So we're going to go to some of these snowflakes. and I'm going to show you a few of the different functions that Design Space can do. You'll notice on the screen um, there's a lock button in the corner. That allows you to move images in proportion. So if you keep that lock button locked, you can resize things and it will stay in the correct proportion. But if you want to stretch your images, you can unclick the lock and that way you can stretch things whichever way you'd like to stretch them. This is helpful when you're trying to conform to a certain shape or design. So let's focus on this image right here. We'll grab this guy. We'll move him down here so we can work through a few of these different functions. So the group function is a function that allows images of both the same color and different colors to stay in place as you move them around the canvas. So that's what you'll find in this button. Um, what tells me this image is grouped is when I click on it, the group button is grayed out, so that's not an option I have anymore. And that's what indicates to me that it is grouped. So I can ungroup it, and if I do that, I can separate these two images and move them independently. To the right of the group and ungroup function is the duplicate function. So if you have something you want a bunch of, you can use the duplicate button. And you can delete items by either clicking on this red X or you can drop them in the trash can on that top right panel. Then as we move um, down the 
down the layers panel, you can check your blank canvas and you can make it different colors. So if you're working on a project that's a particular color, you can change the color of the background. I usually leave mine white just to keep things a little more simple. And while we're, on, while we're on that part of the panel, if you click the little scissors button, this gives you some different options for your image. If you're going to use the blade to cut your image out of either paper or vinyl or cut it out of a material, you're gonna wanna select cut. For fonts and other things, you can select write, which will allow the Cricut to write it with pens if you add that into the pen clamp. You can also change different things to score, which is a little bit more unique. That's when you would use that score line under the shapes tab, so that's not quite as common. And then this option is for print then cut, which I told you guys is a little bit more advanced, so it's not something that you wanna worry about most of the time. I just wanted to let you guys know that this was here. So if we change it back to cut, we can also change the colors of whatever is selected. So keep that in mind as well. If you're doing a project with a certain color a paper or vinyl and you wanna know what it's gonna look like, you can change its colors. So if we go down to the bottom of the layers panel, there are a few more functions that I wanna show you. Another helpful function in Design Space is the Slice function. So I have both of these items selected. You can select items by either drawing a box around them or you can click on both of them in the Layers panel. So in order to, in order to slice them, they both have to be selected. Then when you choose the Slice option, it's gonna create a couple of different images for you. Here's our original snowflake. Here is the cutout. The end goal of a slice is to give you an outline of the two items basically. So it gives you the negative shape of slicing one object into another. So if you just wanted the outside of this, you can slice your objects. And I use this undo button up in the top left hand corner a lot. That undoes any of your options. So the next option to the right is weld. And you're not gonna use weld in images as much because it's gonna take one image and flatten everything that you have selected. So all three of these would become one image. So they would all blend into each other. So it's not a super common thing for images, but it's more common for fonts. So I wanna show you a little bit more about how to use weld with fonts. So as you'll notice, this is a script font, and unfortunately, when you type things in Design Space in a script font, they're going to be disconnected just like this. So in order to make them look like a real script font, I'm gonna go up here to letter spacing and make it zero, and that just brings the letters a little bit closer together. And then I'm going to ungroup this object because right now it's one solid object. So I'm gonna ungroup it and each of these letters are gonna become little individuals. So I can move this I a little bit closer. Then I can move the letters so that they're touching because it's a cursive script font so the letters are supposed to be touching. When I weld, I can't make any further changes other than undoing the first time. So I want my image to look exactly the way that I want it when I weld it. So that's why I move the I closer and the U closer because that will be my last opportunity to fix this image. So I'm gonna select everything. And before I weld, let me show you guys the reason why it's so important to weld. So you can put the this font together as a script font, but if you don't weld it, here's what's going to happen. Let's use this Y for example and change the color. So I'm also gonna arrange it and bring it to the front just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So if you don't weld this image, you're going to get these little cut lines that go on top of your other letters. The reason you'll get these little cut lines on top of your other letters is because right now these are all individual images. So when we weld this image, it's going to make it all one piece and all of the cursive letters are going to be connected so that there's no little cut lines in each letter. So that's why it's so important to weld fonts. Not all fonts, just scraped or cursive fonts. That's what's important to weld. 
So I'm going to select everything. And that's another tip that I have for you guys is when you're making, when you're doing fonts like this, to make sure that your letters line up correctly, I like to make it really large so that I can see it up close. And then when, once I weld it, I can make it small again. So now this all went from individual images all to one image, and I can take it back down to the correct size. So that's the weld function. And again, this one's important because the only the only thing you can do to it after welding it is undoing it one time. If you do a bunch of images after that, you're not gonna be able to undo this function anymore. So just keep that in mind. So we'll continue with our snowflake here. So in order to select multiple images at once, I can click the first image and then I'm holding down shift to select these other two. So that way this whole entire snowflake, all of its layers are selected. The next function I want to show you is attach. So on the attach function, that's a really helpful one for keeping items in place that are the same color when they go to the mat. So if you're doing a more complicated project that has multiple layers of different colors, you want to attach all of the items only of the same color so that when they go to the mat, they stay exactly in place for the way that you want to apply them. This is important because items that are attached will all turn into the same color. So right now I have a snowflake and a pink background, but if I attach the two of them, they will all become the same color. And so if you don't want that, you want to make sure that you continue to only attach items of this same exact color. The so next function here is flatten. Flatten is used in print and cut projects. So again, if you're sticking to the basics, don't worry too much about that. One more function that I want to show you is really, really neat is the contour function. So the, the contour function is really useful because it can make items a lot more simple. So let's say I had this kind of complex snowflake. I'm going to have these really small pieces inside. And if I decided I didn't want to cut them, I can use the contour tool to temporarily get rid of those cut lines. So see each of the things, each of the cut lines highlight as you click over them. I'm going to click all of the cut lines that I want to hide. And as soon as you want to put them back, it, all you do is select the contour tool again. So these aren't going away forever, just for a moment in case I wanted to simplify my snowflake. So if I was doing a really intricate project and I didn't want those little center pieces, I'm able to take it away with the contour tool and I can also put them back with the contour tool. So that's a super helpful function to know how to do. Another important thing to note is that most of the functions that I just showed you do the same thing, but you can also access them by right clicking on your image. So you can see that they're grayed out, but there's group and ungroup and attach and detach and all those things that I just showed you. You can also arrange some of your items. So when you're working with items with lots of layers, this can be really helpful. For example, if you wanted to, for some reason, hide this snowflake behind its outline, you can right click on it and go either send to back or move backward and you'll be able to move this layer in front and keep the snowflake back behind it. So keep that in mind when you're working with some more uh, complicated projects. It's good to know how to be able to arrange some of your items. So next we're going to move into this top toolbar that I told you guys we would go back to later. Now that we have welded this text, we can no longer edit it. I'm going to enter some new text so that I can show you what your options are for editing some of your text. After you work with the insert text tool, you're going to see your text toolbar pop up this way. So you can change your font through this drop down menu. One of the important things to note about the font menu is that I always filter mine down to system fonts because system fonts are fonts that I already have on my computer. If you go to all of your fonts, you'll be able to see fonts with this green A next to them and they'll have a price beside them because you have to purchase these from Cricut to use them unless you have a Cricut Access membership. That's what this green A means. So if you don't have a Cricut Cricut Access membership and you don't want to have to pay for that, you can filter this down to your system fonts and that shows you the fonts that you don't have to pay for. They are already loaded onto your computer. 
So that's really helpful. You can also search for your fonts by name if you know what you are looking for. I like to get most of my fonts from dafont.com. That's D-A-F-O-N-T.com. Those are all free fonts that you can download on the internet. They are really useful and they're great if you're just experimenting. But the other website I like to use for fonts is called fontbundles.net. That's fontbundles.net, and I'll link both of those in the video description for you guys. Um, Font Bundles has a lot of free fonts as well. Once a week, they have a freebie Friday, and they have a category just for free fonts, so they're a great resource as well. But what I like about them is you do have to pay for some of your fonts, but all of them have a commercial use license. So if you are ever planning on selling anything, it can be simpler if you start from commercial fonts from the beginning. You're not allowed to sell products used with free fonts fonts, such as fonts that you've downloaded from defont.com unless you have the proper license. So if you download things from fontbundles.net, most of their fonts have a commercial license already included. So that's just a little pro tip for you guys on text. So when we click back to this text menu, you can see some different options we have. This is how you can bold and italicize your fonts, change your font size, your letter spacing, center, left justified, right justified. You can also curve your text in design space, which can be nice. So if you're using a curved surface, you can use this function to curve your text to fit whatever you're working with. There's a few other functions here um, that you'll want to note. You can also, let's go back to these images. I showed you guys how you can arrange things which is by sending them to the back or to the front, or however that looks. So it looks a little different because the font bar here at the bottom went away now that I don't have a font selected anymore, but it has a lot of the same functions. So you can still arrange by moving things around. You can flip things on a horizontal or vertical axis. You can change the width and the height of a particular item if you know what size you need to have it. Again, if you're gonna change things size, because the lock button is checked, it's gonna change things in proportion. So if you need to change the proportion of either the height or the width, you can uncheck this lock button. It'll let you make your height and width whatever you want. So you have some different options there with that. I typically like to keep this lock button checked because it helps me know that my images look correct and they don't get they don't look stretched out. You can also rotate your images and you can change them on the X Y axis here on the Cricut canvas. But I personally like to select mine and drag them wherever I want them to go. So the last function that I want to show you on this screen is this cool little square here in the corner. One of the downfalls of design space is that you can't, you can't export your projects as SVGs or as files that other people can use outside the Cricut community. So a lot of people, when they're designing something on a canvas, end up taking a screenshot of their project. And if you use this little, this little corner of your canvas between the zero, zero, on your canvas, you can change the different grid lines that are available on your canvas. So let's say I wanted to take a screenshot of the I love you. I don't have to have these grid lines in the background. I can get rid of everything and just take a screenshot of just this area that I want. So that's another pro tip for you guys to use. Um, don't forget that the undo button is here in the top left corner. So you can undo functions that you've just done by accident, which you'll do a lot when you're first starting on the Cricut. We all do. You can also have the select all function, which selects everything on your canvas, which is useful sometimes. So keep those functions in mind in case you need them. So um, before we go to the Make It screen, I want to show you guys a couple other things. This button will take you again to your projects, which you can also access through this side of the toolbar. But you always want to save your projects. You can see up here that my project says it's untitled, and you really don't want to leave your projects that way because if you go to the Make It screen and you end up having to come back and adjust something, sometimes your most recent changes won't save. So you want to make sure you save your project before you go to the Make It screen. So let's say I'm making a snowflake decal. That's what I'll call my project. So now all this work is saved because the banner tells me it was saved. 
So in order to cut things on your Cricut, we're going to go to this Make It screen. And you'll see that it takes you to this screen full of your mats. The reason that these images are sorted is because they were all different colors. If you want the images to cut on the same mat out of the same color material, you want to make them the same color. Each item that you have that's a different color is going to cut on a different mat. So when we go to this Make It screen, you can see that we have three different mats because we have three different colors in our project. Another important aspect of design space is this material size because you're, the piece of material that you're using isn't always 12 inches by 12 inches. So let's say you're using cardstock that's eight and a half by 11 size. This will help resize the material on your mat so that you're not cutting outside your materials and wasting them. You'll also see that this red border is all the way around the mat and that's because even though your mat can be 12 inches by 12 inches or 12 inches by 24 inches and a few other sizes as well, there's a quarter inch border all the way around that the mat actually can't cut. So keep that in mind when you're sizing your projects. The largest that you can actually go, the largest width, is 11.75 because this red border is going to stop things from going off the side. So keep that in mind when you're designing your projects. Let, we're going to pretend that my material is 12 by 12. Uh, but keep in mind that you can also use different sizes like 12 by 24. They do make 12 by 24 mats, which I highly recommend having some on hand. The other thing you can do with 12 by 24 mats is just tape two mats together. That works as well. So another important function on this screen is the mirror function. So keep the mirror function in mind for heat transfer vinyl or iron-on. Those two are the same material. Heat, HTV, heat transfer vinyl, and iron-on are all the same thing. If you're working with any of those materials, you want to make sure to mirror any of the mats that you are cutting out of heat transfer vinyl. So let's say that I am perfectly happy with everything that I'm doing, so I'm going to go on to continue. So after my Cricut connects, you'll notice that my material is set to vinyl. And the way that I did that is I used the dial actually on my Cricut. If you purchase a Cricut Maker, which is a little bit newer model than the Cricut I have, you will go ahead and select your material right from this screen. But those of us who have the Cricut Explorers and the Cricut Explorer Airs, we use the dial on our machines. So you'll see on your Cricut machine that there are several different options for materials there. But I wanted to show you guys the custom screen. Once you get to the custom dial, you'll see that lots of these favorites pop up here. Um, the Cricut has an impressive number of preset settings to cut a, ver a variety of materials. And one of those that some newbies don't always read realizes here is the glitter iron-on setting. Glitter iron-on is a lot thicker than regular iron-on or HTV, so you definitely want to use this setting if that's what you happen to be cutting. If you go to browse all materials, you can find tons of different settings that Cricut has already loaded into into its software so that it cuts those materials properly for you. You can search for them and you can even star ones that you use most often and they'll appear under your favorites. Like one of my favorites is the washi tape setting. If you're cutting really intricate designs of vinyl, I will sometimes use the washi tape setting to make sure that my vinyl cuts well. So we're going to pretend like I'm cutting vinyl like just around my regular dial, no big deal, but those custom settings are there just for you. Next you'll see um, that it'll tell you what tools and mat you need. So since I'm just cutting vinyl, I don't have anything required in clamp A, but clamp A is where you could put a marker, a pen, or a scoring tool if you were using one of those. So we'll say that I'm loading up one of those projects. Once you click the blinking arrow on your Cricut, the next step you'll see the go button. So you'll have this little C button flashing on your machine and that's what you'll press to get your project cutting. So if you're doing multiple mats, you would press the C button and then once it was finished, you would unload that mat, you would reload the next mat with a new material and then you would press the go button again and then you would do the same thing until your whole project is complete. So that's an overview of the cut screen for you. We're going to cancel this cut since I'm not really cutting anything. It'll ask me if I'm sure, and I am sure. 
So that's a basic overview of Design Space for you guys. I hope you find this explanation helpful for some of the Design Space software. Don't worry or get too intimidated by all of the things Design Space can do. Start with those simple projects, especially the free Cricut projects, to get yourself oriented to this software. And before you'll know it, you'll be making all kinds of really amazing things. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, please make sure to hit the subscribe button below so you can follow my channel for lots of great Cricut tutorials, wedding DIYs, and other really fun crafts that you can make with the Cricut. Thanks for watching. Happy crafting.